Let's turn to business news now with Nona Peltier. Nona, the shareholders at Sparks Annual Meeting in Auckland today aren't happy about the company's plans to take next year's annual meeting entirely online. Nona is shaking her head because you attend these damn meetings, don't you, Nona? <laughs> that's right. Like the human dynamo you are. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and, what, and what are Sparks shareholders upset about? Well, they, they look, a lot of the people who turn up at these meetings is off, are often the same faces. And they're, you know, older um, shareholders who have time, middle of the day, to attend a meeting just before lunch so, or just after. So, so, if you, so do you see the same shareholders at, at, oh, yes. at, and from company to company to company? Absolutely. On, on the circuit, so to oh, speak. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, that's a circuit for sure. It's In many ways, it's a... Well, it's an opportunity for these shareholders to come along and, and eyeball those directors and hold them to account and have these little personal one-on-ones after the meeting. And yeah, I mean, some of the meetings are really well attended. Uh, Sparks suggesting that their attendance is off is about, what, 30%. But still, you know, there was more than 100 people there. And they do want to spend that time after the meeting to, to get those uh, directors and Grill them on whatever it is that's their interest. Just before we go on to the really delightful part of the story, are fund managers there, are institutions and corporates there, or is it mostly, basically it, mostly small shareholders? It depends. Right. I've been to some meetings where there are definitely institutional uh, shareholders right. there, and they'll stand up to ask a question or what have you, and I've seen this uh, at, at you know, a variety of meetings. and So, no, they're mixed, and it, it, there's no one kind of shareholder. There, there are a variety yeah, of shareholders. Uh, yeah, for right. sure. So if Spark goes virtual, what is lost? Well, that whole no, no. interaction right. disappears because, of course, now you're just doing it online and you're going to ask a question and, uh, you know, you'll, you'd be in a queue and what's your question? A lot of people don't feel comfortable with that. And uh, that's what the point of one of the shareholders there was for sure, that, you know, this kind of thing is just not on for um, shareholders. The older shareholders especially don't want to do it online. And also the Shareholders Association head, John Hawkins, are saying, like, why not have a hybrid? Why do we have to have all or nothing? And um, why can't we have a bit of both, which is what, you know, Spark was doing today, a bit of both. Um, so they had, it was virtual, and they had one question, and then uh, from the shareholders uh, in the meeting, there were many questions. So what else happens? Come on, Nana, okay, come so on. Okay, so what come happens on. is, now this is a joke, I mean, it's sort of a bit of a joke, but we all know when the questions need to come to an end because you can smell those sausage rolls <laughs> wafting. Right. So, <laughs> we go, is look, that so if you're not, if you're not, uh, if you're listening and not watching, we've just popped up a photo. This is from the Spark uh, shareholders meeting today, is it? Oh, you, know, you can see the sausage rolls there right I, in the I, foreground. I can, I can see. They look like Alice and Holst sausage rolls to me and little mini savouries. That's absolutely and, right. and tomato sauce, <laughs> tomato sauce in a white bowl. <laughs> And I mean, really, I don't mean to be rude, Spark, but it looks like a 1950s rugby club, the well, catering. It's true, but this is what the shareholders like. Unless, of course, you're at the restaurant brands right. AGM, in which case you expect to get your KFC and do they ever bucket it on there. Right. That's right. And the Pizza Hut. Mm. So if it, goes, uh, if it goes online... There's no more food. No more sausage rolls. <laughs> no more sausage rolls. But, I mean, more seriously, though, um, one of the shareholders, a uh, long-time shareholder, Martin Geary, he was there and he had quite a lot to say, and I think we have some of his uh, audio from this morning. There will be a lot of us, me included, that will feel shy about cutting in online. We don't like using this apparatus at all. Also, it gives you the, this sort of um, animal farm thing where you'll be able to cut us off if you don't like what we're saying. It's a concern that you remove yourselves away from the shareholders. This could lead to arrogance of the board towards the shareholders, disenfranchising the shareholders. That's what I've got to say. Could you please comment on that? I'm happy to comment. Martin Geary expressing with, with some force, Nina. That's right. He had a lot more to say. I mean, that was just a piece of what he had to say. And I think it resonated with the, uh, yeah, the company. Course, I mean, course. they're, they're yeah. listening to what, uh, what was said. We'll see what happens. I, certainly there's more discussion to go on with this. Right. Now, as we're speaking, literally, Pip's just brought into the uh, studio a note from Porta Mentha, who, of course, um, the receivers of Pumpkin Patch, uh, have confirmed the closure of 27 Pumpkin Patch and Charlie and Me stores across Australia. So these are further to the... 
Close is already announced in New Zealand, right? 52 employees will be redeployed to other pumpkin patch stores and there will be a loss of up to 145 jobs. A long list of the stores, which we won't read out because they're Australian. Receiver Brendan Gibson said the likely closure of some pumpkin patch stores in both Australia and New Zealand had been signalled when the business was placed in receivership on 26th of October. Uh, the stores will close on or before 15 November, so that's um, just over a week away. Any surprises here, Nina? Not really, no. And in fact, uh, you know, this company has struggled for years. Uh, they, they brought in a really sharp uh, chief executive, Di Humphreys. In fact, I was at one of their annual meetings. Uh, the one, the last one that they had was quite large. At that stage, you know, they were really quite optimistic that they could turn around the business, but they had so much debt. I think at one stage, the receiver indicated they were some like $80 million mm -hmm. of debt, and they made a loss of $20 million in the last year. So, I mean, how can you possibly go on with that? Right. So I think overall, but you know, I, it's still, they had turnover, I think, of, well, well over $200 million. So there's still value in that company and hopefully the receiver will find a way to, to sell it to somebody who can run it as a, a good business. And, and save the remaining jobs. Absolutely. What are the markets in the weekend? Well, let's see. Our market didn't do very well. Once again, down another 1%. That was 70 points down to 6,708. That's our top 50 index. That's really a reflection of what we're seeing in Asia ahead of the U.S. presidential election. Uh, people are nervous and uh, they're taking their money out of riskier assets and moving them into safer ones. The New Zealand dollar is steady. Uh, we're a little bit weaker tone this afternoon, but 73.1 US cents. That's not exactly weak. 95.2 Australian, once again, and 58.6 British pence. And so I guess next week is going to be really mm, what amazing. tells the story. Absolutely amazing. Nona Peltier, thanks so much, Nona. Have a great weekend.